everyone, and welcome to another episode of my Woman Who Inspires series in the magical month of March, the month that honors women. My name is Sreshta Tiwari. I am the director of the Self-Worth Leadership and Empowerment Consultancy. I am also a motivational speaker and wholeness guide, and at heart, I just want mental freedom for all women. In this series, the purpose is to show women that our so-called negative emotions or the negative things we feel are really pushing us to a better place, something bigger, and even our purpose. Today, I'm really excited to have with me Kelly's Travels. Kelly's is a settlement services provider and a tech startup founder. She owns the company Settle successful services in Canada. She holds a master's in environmental science and management. And recently you would have seen her in the Newsday and also being interviewed on TTT. So, so welcome. welcome to our series, Kelly. How are you today? Hi, I am great. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are most welcome. Kelly's also, well, she will tell you her story. So let me not preempt, let me not preempt her story, <laughs> but I am really excited to have her and I will invite her now to share her emotional healing journey. All right. So I think my journey actually begins. Um, oh, you know, it's so, it's so interesting. As you mentioned that to me, I'm now thinking, where does it actually begin? You know what I mean? Because I think that as whole Caribbean women, I was born and raised in Trinidad and Tobago. I only migrated to Canada when I was like 29 years old. As whole Caribbean women, we have so many places in our life where we would have experienced trauma that wasn't really looked at or even considered trauma at that point in time, right? Um, and now in my 30s, I'm now 33, it really is about unlearning and really taking a second look at some of those things that happened in your childhood happened in your teens, happened in your, in your 20s as you consider to be normal, but maybe having underlying effects now as you're an adult, right? Yeah. So I would say my most recent <laughs> journey of healing would have definitely begun when I had my kids, right? At that point in time, I had two kids in the space of two years, back to back, right? Back to back. And they were horrible pregnancies. Um, in totality, I spent about six months in, in hospital my two kids okay. they were horrible like they were horrible I almost lost my life um I was in and out of hospital even my kids um, they were born they were sickly right and at that point in time I just felt really defeated by life defeated um I had did all that people say you should have done I went to school right I went to school I studied I got a good job and I still felt like totally defeated by life I felt like it's my purpose was never going to be fulfilled. I felt like if there was no reason for me to be here anymore as a new mother. And honestly, now looking back, it's like I definitely identify that I had baby blues or um, what do they call it? Was it your postpartum depression? Postpartum depression, yes. Yeah. Um, but at that, that point in time, I didn't identify it. And no one around me really identified it either because so much was happening, right? I just felt completely deflated and defeated with life you know and it was at that point in time too having these two young kids um being emotionally depleted financially depleted because i'm sure you could understand having two kids <laughs> two sick kids not being able to work for such a long period of time financially depleted emotionally depleted physically depleted as well i really started to question everything about life and that is when i started to explore the option of immigration right so for me, immigration was a way to kind of just escape my reality at that point in time. Because I felt like if I needed an escape, right? Yeah. Um, the journey for immigration was not easy. It definitely added a lot of stress onto the situation, but it was like hope for a new beginning, right? That kept me, it was like a drive. I'm hoping that this is going to be the end all, the, the happily ever after that I wanted, that I envisioned for my life, that I was expecting that, you know, your parents preach to you, that you, you go to church and you hear about this moment of epiphany where everything is perfect now, you know? Mm -hmm. I hope, that is what I hoped it was. So I pushed through within that time and I did it, All right? I brought my entire family of four. We landed in Canada in May of 2019 and we did it. And 
it was at that point in time I realized that no, this actually was not the solution. <laughs> yeah. Right. After I went through all of that, it was at that point in time I realized that no, you know, like running away was not the solution. Right? Running away definitely was not the solution. Um anxiety crept in big time. I never knew what anxiety was before landing in Canada. I never knew. But I think it was just a climax of everything else that I've been trying to run away from now just be coming to the forefront of my brain and I have to deal with it. Um, and I struggled, not to mention being ripped away from my family, you know, being ripped away from my mom, my support system, and being in this new place that I'd never been before. So my husband and I, we had never been in Canada before landing as permanent residents, right? So it was, it was rough, you know, it was rough. Um, and the settlement journey for me was rough as well. Like my first night in Canada, we made an error in our booking and because of that the hotel did not want to take take us so i was crying in the lobby crying mm -hmm. in the lobby mm -hmm. take my money and let me be in peace you know and from there it was just like a roller coaster of emotions a roller coaster of emotions i would definitely say that i thought that that was a solution at the point in time but it was really just another step in my healing process and now more than ever, I've, I'm becoming more aware that it is a journey. It, there is no destination here. The healing is a journey that I am on, you know? So I started this business after we settled. Within 22 months of landing in Canada, we bought our first home and then we bought a rental property. So we were doing well, but I just knew that I wanted to do more. You know, I wanted to do more. I wanted to leave my mark on this world. I want to help people I want to you know I want to do so much more for myself and for my legacy and for everything that I believe and I want to leave my mark on this world so I started this company Sata Successful Services which actually focuses on Caribbean immigrants and helping them to settle in Canada without anxiety because I know what that feels like so there's a land like a hot potato out of nowhere in a foreign country right so I wanted to help persons to, to at least diminish some of that anxiety that I felt. And then I also started this tech startup called Ru, which globally is going to help immigrants to move throughout the world without fear. Right? So I really believe in immigrant story. I believe in, in, I believe in the rights and the privilege and the, 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 <laughs> the desire to move through the world move through the world right carry your culture and you grow up and carry it somewhere else let people learn about your culture elsewhere learn about other people's culture go see how other people live right like expand mm -hmm. your mind you know so i really i love traveling which is why i branded myself kelly's travels um yes. and this rule app is really about helping immigrants to move through that system and to move through the world without fear by connecting them with professionals trust with the immigration consultants worldwide that will give them the professional advice that they need to make their dreams right. become a reality right mm -hmm. i really believe that traveling is uh, a great healer it's yeah. definitely not the one thing because uh, i know i ran away and still <laughs> had to deal with my issues when i arrived but it definitely enabled me to kind of just see myself in a different environment and to really touch base with the things i was trying to hide Get, get out of my comfort zone. So I have no choice but to face myself, you know? So now as a settlement services provider, I provide services such as airport pickup, um, document runs, moving, um, getting your kids in school, helping you to find a job, job search, you name it. And I also wrote an ebook called The Waiting to help immigrants actually budget and plan for their new life in Canada, right? So mm -hmm. I'm really excited about all of the things that I've been able to put forward and my clients are getting great results. However, I really like to just stress on the fact that I haven't arrived. All right, I'm still struggling. <laughs> I'm still in the, the, the healing phase. I'm still in the healing journey. And I definitely believe that the journey is indeed the prize. Yeah, and we always continue to heal because life is, as you said, we never arrive, right? There's always some path to go on to learn or some sort of progress. But I want to go back to your story. I love how you spoke about learning and unlearning because, you know, when we are children, of course, we are taught 
we have to follow a certain line. Mm -hmm. And once we follow that line, we will be okay. And I like that you were honest enough to say that you wanted to to migrate, to escape, which which was which was your reality. And then when you landed, you realized, no, it wasn't the solution. And I really want to, to speak about that because a lot of things, I mean, you, you migrated, but a lot of times in order to escape what we are feeling and what we are going through, we participate in something that wouldn't help us deal with it. And in your case, it worked out, but you know, whether, whether that be indulging in, in drinking or in food or liming, and we think that momentary uh, momentary activity was going to help us. But unless we go within, as, as you spoke about, and really sit with, with ourselves, which again, you spoke about when you arrived in Canada, you don't really get to deal with and feel your emotions and what they are telling you. And then having arrived there and feeling so lost, but having gone through the process now, you identify with the emotions that persons feel when going through this process, especially being uprooted from so much support here in Trinidad and having no support there. And now as a woman, of course, being the nurturer, wanting to help provide that support to your own people, your Caribbean people, so much so that you have established a company and have even gone further to start a tech startup to help persons around the world. Wow, Kelly. So yeah. <laughs> it's such an honor to, to meet you. It's 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 so powerful as a woman to help on the level that you are helping using your emotions, which is what the what the series is about, showing how your emotions could really push you to something that is so awesome and so great. It may not be the doctor and the lawyer, but if you're not fulfilled by that, then you shouldn't be going after it. And you could tell when, when how you speak that you are totally passionate about what you are doing. If you all are interested in her services, if, if you are thinking about my greeting, I encourage you to check out her YouTube channel. I would, I would have her information below, which I really just watch for pleasure. I was telling her because I just love how she presents the information. I don't want to migrate, but she gives such good information in such a relatable Caribbean way that you, you just watch it for pleasure instead of watching some show that's going to make you cry. <laughs> so, um, Kalisa, I want to ask you, are you grateful for your experiences? And if yes, why? Oh, I am definitely grateful for all of my experiences. Like even the, even the tough ones, right? So I grew up in Mova, Trinidad and Tobago, right? So growing up, and my mother's a police officer, right? So I've had some experiences in life where people probably would cry. If I tell them about it, but it has definitely made me, given me the ability to relate to almost anyone. Right. Yeah, like I, I think I have the ability to relate to almost anyone because I know what it is like to grow up without. I know what it is like to grow up in crying. I know what it is like to do without, to be scared. I know what it is like to succeed, to get educated. I know what it is like to feel like, okay, I'm, I'm that. I'm that. <laughs> like, I'm the boss, right? <laughs> And to be confident as well in yourself. So I think that because of my life experiences, I'm definitely able to relate to a very wide range of people. And that is the number one thing that I'm grateful for. That I have the ability to be so open-minded and to just accept people for who they are and allow them to be themselves. You know? Um, I'm always reminded as well of situations growing up, like challenges that I really that I would have traded the world to get to overcome. For example, when I was in primary school, I had problems reading, right? And I was a slow reader. Um, it wasn't discovered until I was like in standard one or standard two that your girl can see properly. So I wasn't in fact a slow reader, I was blind, right? <laughs> you know? And at that point in time, I would have traded the world to just overcome those small challenges. And it's amazing how when you feel like an outcast, you tend to just feel like if there's no way for you to be able to take that, that, that thing that you hate so much and make it into something powerful. But I've seen time and time again where the thing that I thought was going to be a defect has actually proven to be an advantage in many, many times in my life, right? So now I can talk about these experiences openly and feel proud about it because, hey, yeah, I've been through that. I did that. Been there, done that, right? <laughs> <laughs> been there, done that. And you know what? I'm okay. I survived and we all right, you know? So I'm definitely grateful for all of my experiences, the ups, the downs, in-betweens, 
indifference, right? Definitely grateful. Yeah, and I like you. You spoke about um, that issue with reading. You know, a lot of times when we can't do something, it's not that we can't do it. It's just that we need a tool. And in your case, it would have been glasses Absolutely. or a skill, depending on, on what it is. And I love, I love your message. I love your message you could, because you could really do anything that you want. And the experiences that you have really help you to relate to other people so you can then help them because a lot of times you know sometimes I do a room healing through divorce and this person had come in and she was saying at first she thought we were therapists I do it with my friend and but we are not therapists we just went through that experience and she said you know this is so much better than somebody um, giving me advice who don't understand what I'm going through because I know you could relate and I'm not knocking therapists at all I completely believe in therapy but just on a human level people like to relate to people who have had the same experience with them that is our, our the basis of our human connection and the last thing I want to tell you Kelly, is what message do you have out there for women for women my number one message would be to stop being humble like stop especially for Caribbean women for my Caribbean women because I feel like if we eat humble pie Right, we always shy away from from taking um from from being celebrated. We always put ourselves in last purposefully. We always are willing to sacrifice ourselves, our mental health, our our everything, our health, our everything for those around us, and we never actually take um credit for the work that we do. Right. So I think that for women in particular, speaking to Caribbean women, I would say stop being humble. Like we eat humble pie. <laughs> <laughs> we, eat hum- we, be, uh, we eat a bit too much humble pie, right? When somebody says something nice to you, smile and say thank you, right? Be <laughs> confident, take it all in. If you have the degree, say you have the degree. If you have the experience, say you have the experience. Like be comfortable speaking positive about yourself, right? There's a difference between promoting yourself and being boastful. We need to start mm-hmm. promoting ourselves a bit more is not being boastful, right? Because everybody mm-hmm. else is doing it. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't speak up, no one is going to know what you can do. All right? So I just want to encourage women to be more powerful, to step into yourself, to take those things that you probably think are defects and actually switch it around in your mind, right? And now, okay, mm-hmm. this is the thing that actually is making me different, making me unique, making me more valuable, right? And stop being humble. That's the end to that. <laughs> I totally, (laughs) yeah, I I totally relate to that because, um, you know, for me, I, um, I know, you know, people wouldn't believe it if you met me through this forum, but I am introverted and I don't like to talk. And I always thought that what I had to say, nobody wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, as I have done, been doing the series, I'm always, amazed but I'm beginning to accept it before Kelly spoofs me but I'm always amazed that um you know when people come back and say you have such an interesting perspective because all the time I thought nobody cared what I had to say and I was also conflicted because I also teach Zumba and everybody loves my Zumba personality because that's an out there personality Mm. but they don't like me you know they don't like that I just like to talk about purposeful things <laughs> and not what mm-hmm. we eat and what we're drinking. So I really relate to everything that you have said. And gosh, Kelly, so it was such an honor to have you on this program. You are definitely the life of the party. <laughs> and I know you are doing so much to help persons, but your, 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 your client is everyone, even though this show is targeted at women. I mean, you are just helping anyone who is in need of that help and really providing that psychological safety, which is so important in our human existence. So I do want to thank you for being a woman who inspires and I will see you guys soon. Bye everyone. Bye.